Hello everyone and welcome to the Westland Public Library's In the Kitchen program. I'm your host Sarah Chesney and in this episode we are celebrating our second annual Library Comic Con event with another Cooking with Comics. Last year you may recall that I did a similar segment with Robin Ha's Cook Korean. A link to that video is in the description below. I encourage you to do that. I still think about those ong um little rice balls. I highly encourage you to make them. Today we are making the carbonara recipe from Lucy Nicely's Relish. She actually has a number of graphic novels already on the market, including French Milk, which is kind of where she got started, um, Relish, which followed up. A lot of the comic books in her collection are biographical, so it includes her experiences traveling uh, with two travelogues, as well as her experience getting married, and then later her um, experience with trying to get pregnant and then having a child. That was actually a very intense graphic novel, just as a content warning for those who are trying to become pregnant or have had difficult pregnancies. That one, just go in. It's a beautiful story. I highly recommend you read it, but it is not for everybody who may be triggered. So to get started with this recipe, I actually have one tablespoon of butter um, currently cooking on the stovetop. There are four cloves of garlic, which have been encouraged to come to a brown. This is going to give the butter a nice garlicky flavor. What I really appreciate about this particular recipe is that she encourages you to set it aside to smear on some bread. And I have tried this recipe and I have done that and it is absolutely fantastic. So I highly recommend that you take the time to get these all nice and browned. To this butter, we're going to add bacon. The recipe called for a half a pound of pancetta or three cut or three slices of thick cut bacon. This is a boar's head bacon. I went with the boar's head bacon because it was simply cheaper. A lot of us are facing difficulties buying groceries right now. A half a pound of pancetta is quite a luxury to be spending. I definitely would do this in the future. Sorry, let me get the rest of that. I would definitely encourage this in the future. It sounds absolutely fantastic, but I couldn't justify it when I'm trying to cook it for you out in the audience and try to encourage you to do it. So if you have tried it or you go about trying it and you loved it, please let me know. Just kind of getting this all coated, not that it needs it. It's bacon in a nonstick pan, so it's not going to risk setting. However, I'm going to make this cook until it comes to a light brown before moving on to the next steps. So off to the side, I actually have a pot of water that is starting to boil. This will cook up to a pound of spaghetti. And then in front of me, I have three eggs. No particular stipulation on those, but I am going to stir them up to get them started because to that, I'm also going to add half a cup of Parmesan and a fourth cup of Romero cheese. As you can see, those two contents with the bacon and the butter already cooking in the pan, this is going to be a highly salted dish. So this recipe is definitely a salt to taste or a salt to what is good for you. As you can see, this is not a heart healthy meal, uh, but it doesn't have to be a heart stopping meal either. I'm not gonna add salt to this just because the audience I am making this for at home is going to react poorly to that much salt. So I do need to be cautious about the salt I add, but I will be adding some freshly ground pepper in just a moment. I do have my salt off to the side. I have a wonderful colleague here who will be sampling this, not on camera, but if they wanted to add salt to theirs, they are welcome to do so just because that's why salt is there. Okay, so you're bringing this to a creamy texture. We are not going to actually cook this in any of these containers. This is actually going to be cooked by the pasta as it comes straight from the pasta water, uh, straight from the pasta water drained directly into here. That is going to cook the egg and make it safe to eat. I'm gonna take a second. The bacon, again, I wish you had smell a vision at home because my colleague and I are just sitting here smelling uh, buttered garlic and cooking bacon. And those are, if you like 
bacon and you like meats, those are fabulous flavors and smells together. Okay, so this is almost done. Once it comes to a golden brown, we're actually going to, <laughs> there we go. You're working with different equipment at home. I actually use mortar at home to grind up my fresh pepper. Uh, and I use that for about a week before it goes poorly just because it's sitting out in the container. I do cover it to try to keep it fresh, but so when I get to work and I have this, sometimes it's really funny just to watch me try to figure it out. <laughs> I just laugh at myself when you have to use other equipment. It's like going to a friend's kitchen and you know how to use all of their equipment, but for some reason it's not the same. Their oven works just slightly different. Their oven or their stove top, you know, will have hot spots in different areas. Their oven will have hot spots in different areas. So that's always really fun, I guess, to figure out. So to the bacon in not too long, we are going to add a half a cup of cooking white wine. This is, there's several options available. So we are cooking with a Chardonnay. I'm not going to, I'm not saying a brand. I don't have a specific brand. I literally went, what is the cheapest? Because I'm going to be throwing it and cooking off the alcohol for this. For you at home, this might be something already in your fridge. But if you're a non-alcoholic, there are several options for you. A lot of people um, recommend a wine vinegar and then cutting it in half. So doing a like half cup vinegar to half cup water. That is an option because you're really looking for the tang that's imparted by the wine. Uh, there's actually non-alcoholic white wine specifically for cooking, which may work best for you. It's all about what is best for you and your choices. I happen to have wines at home, so I went with the easiest case scenario. Okay, this is getting, getting there. What's really awkward about this kitchen sometimes is when you have a large pot off to the right and then a pan off to the left. They're not sitting on the cooking space surface enough to cook and utilize large portions of the surface. So it goes a little bit longer than it would typically if I was at home or of course if I wasn't being recorded. Checking in on this. This, of course, is taking forever because, of course, I'm filming. What's going to happen is while I'm away, this is going to finish cooking the rest of the way. I'm going to add this. I am going to cook it for two minutes. The liquid is actually not going to cook off. It's, it's going to mostly cook off, but that will coat the, the pasta later as well to help keep it nice and creamy. And especially if you make a little bit extra or you're cooking for you and yourself, this could feed up to four. So if you're going to refrigerate it, it works a little bit better. So I'm going to add the wine, cook it for two minutes, I'm going to put it off to the side just a little while I'm waiting for the pasta to boil. So stay tuned to the video and I will see you soon. Hello everyone and welcome back. So I just drained the pasta. It took forever to cook on this little kitchen, but it is finally done. This next part is going to move really quickly because we want to take advantage of this heat. I'm going to add the still steaming hot pasta to the oh, to the bowl. Set that off to the side. I'm going to start turning this so we can start coating the pasta, taking advantage of that melting cheese and the cooking egg to thoroughly and evenly coat the pasta. Now, if your bowl starts to move, as I've mentioned before, has been recommended online, you can always add a surface underneath it, such as a towel to help you stir. But this is working quite nicely for me. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add, now that everything has kind of been cooked and thoroughly coated, there's still little chunks of cheese that haven't melted yet. It will continue to do so as we progress. And then I'm going to add the bacon along with the slightly reduced white wine. Another recommendation that Lucy made was to add uh, peas. You can add frozen peas or regular peas to this. 
I did that in my test run of this, and I have to say that I really just preferred it on, to, on the side. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, I preferred adding it to the side. Uh, not that it was terrible in it. I actually thought it was quite great. Just I, what happened after several cooking segments of this, after reheating it, uh, all the peas fell to the bottom, of course. That's not what she was probably thinking. She's probably making this for herself and eating and eating it pretty quickly, whereas I was eating this over the course of several days. Um, even the bacon right now, um, as I use the tongs, they're missing a whole bunch of bacon, so it's falling through. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to let this rest just a little. Um, you don't have to do that home. You can do that actually right away. But what this will allow it to do is just settle just a little bit more so I can continue to stir in the bacon and make it uh, safe for my colleague and I to sample it. Uh, so I will be seeing you back in just a second. And welcome back, everybody. So direct audience input, mm, delicious. We were sampling, my colleague and I, this before uh, I hit the record button. And as you can see, and the pictures will be displaying at this time, the cheese has melted wonderfully. It has coated everything evenly. Um, even having some specks is not that big of a deal, especially if you're a home chef. Who will know but you? My colleague also recommended that at home they bake their bacon. I actually don't think that that would be a terrible idea here. I can imagine the rich, creamy, cheesy um, pasta going really well with maybe some crispy baked bacon. Thank you for joining us for our second annual Library Comic Con event, Cooking with Comics. I hope you have the opportunity to catch our other virtual programs, as well as joining us on October 27th for our Comic-Con Takes Over the Library event, where we will have the Pacific Northwest Guild of Cosplayers doing live demonstrations, as well as volunteers from the Guild showing off their wonderful costumes and talking all about it. We will have trivia, giveaways, as well as fabulous opportunities for patrons just to browse our collection. And then we also have a comic book artist coming in and talking about com or, uh, drawing. So I hope you have the opportunity to check our website for upcoming events. And I hope you enjoy this carbonara dish by Lucy Nicely's Relish. Thank you.